Hey guys, well, I hope that you enjoyed that uh, wild one that we just went through in uh, the um, uh, American League as the uh, Browns managed to score two in the uh, bottom of the ninth inning to uh, win the game for Rube Waddell and sort of save the day. Made me a little bit curious, right? So I know a lot of stories about Rube Waddell. We all know about them. We've all heard a whole bunch about him and um, his wild times and wild days. So I thought we'd go ahead and take a look at least at what he did in 1908. So uh, some things I didn't know, I mean, he died at age 37, right? Sort of a kid, real interesting looking guy. Um, uh, great, of course, according to War, which is interesting. I didn't know that uh, War saw him uh, as highly as it did. But it's interesting, so I'm thinking about mostly the strikeout and walk total, and I thought, I wonder if he had other games like that in real life. Boy, he had a whole bunch of them, right? I mean, look at this right here. So you've got uh, April 24th, um, the uh, uh, Browns hosted the White Sox. He threw a complete game victory, uh, won that one 2-1, to one, gave up four walks, seven strikeouts, right? You go look uh, down here, a bunch of these seven strikeouts, seven strikeouts, and so on. I wish that uh, baseball uh, reference would not do that. Um, all right. <laughs> Uh, whatever. I hate it when you guys put this fancy stuff in your pages. Whatever. Uh, I just want to highlight one thing, that's all. Uh, but then look at this up here, right? So he loses this game against the White Sox uh, June 4th. This is the second game of a doubleheader. There was 11 innings, uh, strikes out 11, walks 5. This is one of those where it would be kind of nice if we had um, a play-by-play -play account. In fact, I kind of wonder, and you know I'm going to get in trouble for doing this, right, um, on camera. I kind of wonder if we can find one. So we go over here to Missouri. It's in uh, St. Louis, so we're probably best um, looking, uh, I don't know, what do you think? Uh, maybe St. Louis Republic? No, they don't have that for uh, 1908. I'm trying to remember. I should know this stuff by heart, but I don't. I, I keep getting confused between uh, the two years. I mean, look at the post-dispatch there. What was that? That was uh, June uh, 4th, so we will look at June 5th. And see, we're probably not going to have a full play-by-play uh, -play account, but just sort of get an idea of exactly what happened. Uh, of course, we have to scroll away a little bit and uh, go take a quick look and see if we can find anything here. Here you go. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, Browns lose, second, Browns lose second with uh, bases full. <laughs> this is interesting. Quick wit of White Sox manager and changing pitchers beats locals, right? So 20 innings overall was played 9 in the first, 11 in the second. Um, and uh, the uh, Browns won the first game 2-1. to one. And then the, the uh, Sox uh, won the second game uh, barely in the 11th inning. Um, yeah. Rube never wobbles, never mind the five walks that he gave up. You know, he pitched better ball yesterday than any time during the year, no matter if he was defeated. He had 11 batters, and his curveball was breaking clear up to the 11th inning. He did much better work than his opponent, Frank Smith, but didn't have his watchful support, and the game slipped away. So they're going to put a lot of the blame on uh, uh, his uh, infield or his uh, fielders, it looks like. And uh, this is what happens, of course, when um, we don't uh, read the thing ahead of time as we kind of look through this. Uh, Jimmy Williams did hit a home run in that game, interestingly enough. Um, and, yeah, here we go. Then came the uh, last uh, chance for the Browns. Williams' home run was all they had to their credit. Ferris opened with a single. Spencer bunted, and Donahue tried to get Hope at second. It was too late, right? So a bunt after the single, both were safe. That's what they did back then. And you go through any game account back in those days, you'll see it all the time. Somebody gets a base hit, next guy will try to bunt him over. Then they took Waddle out for Chris, who pushed a bunt through Smith that filled up the bases, right? Again, this is part of the thing that we run into with these uh, old seasons, right? Which is that, you know, if... Um, if uh, you're bunting uh, a good percentage of the time, it won't wind up as a bunt in the box score, right? Because it's a base hit, right? It's You're more likely to bunt if you're up against a bunch of fielders who are having a hard time fielding their positions and throwing you out, and that's what you run into here. And so what happens then? Uh, then there's a, a change of pitchers, and uh, uh, Doc White comes in, and he strikes out Stone. Walsh fans, Stevens, and Williams lied to Donahue, and the crowd dispersed. That's interesting. So they changed pitchers once or twice. Kind of hard to see from that account. We may have to um, actually go back here to uh, – I'm not seeing a box score anywhere. We may have to go back over to uh, baseball uh, reference and see what the official box score says. This, by the way, is one of those frustrations you run into when you deal with the original newspapers because sometimes um, important things for us, like the box score – ends up going completely missing. I'm not seeing anything here anywhere. So you go here and look at what happened. Um, yeah, it was Doc White came in and apparently faced one batter, and then Walsh came in and faced two more. So that's what happened. Uh, White got the one strikeout. Walsh, as was written here, got the other one. Real interesting uh, decision. 
and yeah, White got one out in the uh, 11th inning, and then Walsh came in right afterwards. Um, and yeah, L Williams lying to Donahue, right? So uh, it was uh, Stevens who uh, was um, hitting here in the number two spot. And so that's what happened here, right? Chris had that bunt that uh, loaded the bases. George Stone came up. He's a lefty. And so that's where they put in uh, White, who was a lefty, to pitch against him. And then I'm guessing Stevens, yeah, Stevens was a right-handed uh, batter. And so Walsh, the uh, righty, came in to face him. So there you go. There's a little example, interestingly enough, that we kind of stumbled across of that sort of lefty-righty, um, uh, uh, that lefty-righty difference um, or the uh, lefty-righty platoon advantage. Um, and uh, good example of how this happened uh, back in 1908. Probably something that um, you're not expecting to see. Certainly not something I was expecting to see. That gives you kind of an idea too, right, that um, a lot of what we consider to be like modern and uh, new type of uh, baseball strategy is not really anything new. It actually existed back in the past. So there you have it with um, that game. And, uh, you know, it's uh, kind of fun to do this thing and to uh, play this around. As I've said before, I kind of wish that we had full game accounts available. Maybe they'll become available eventually. Who knows? But it's always nice to go through and look at this here. Look at this. You have uh, 11 strikeouts and six walks in this complete game. Uh, one strike, uh, 10 strikeouts and one walk in that one. And this one is crazy. 17 strikeouts and uh, five walks against Washington, which uh, may have been one of the best games in uh, Waddell's career. 10 inning game that they won, two to one, just barely. So, uh, I mean, we can look into some of this a little bit later. Man, he was paired up against Walter Johnson and uh, he totally beat the pants off of him. How about that? So uh, there you have it. Lots of cool stuff to look at and probably some stuff that we'll look at a little bit later on. It's always fun to do this. Always fun to look through and see what we can find here and uh, what we can learn about early strategy. I'll leave it there with you. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk with you later. Bye.